again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem! How you guys doing? How you like the studio? I didn't like it plain, you know? I didn't like it plain. So, you know what? I'm a Chi-Town boy. That's the way I like it. My cubby's out there, that World Series boy. I hope we get something again like that. Uh, and then our skylines, you know, we do have the most beautiful skylines in the world. Even though the city's ran by a bunch of morons. Anyway, lots of biker news today, but first, as always, my monologue. Yeah, everybody enjoys them. <laughs> oh my god, was it funnier than hell. I just got a text from China now. And, you know, my buddy, hey Denny, if you're, if you're listening up there, <laughs> you're gonna love this one, buddy. I heard that you were getting the screw me eyes from a chick. Problem is, everybody, this chick has the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, the gift that keeps on giving. You know, one of them deals where, you know, your dick might fall off. So she got the biggest hots for him. And he's like, hell no, man. She ain't getting herpes on my back seat. <laughs> Good luck with that, Denny. I'd be going to another place if I were you, but that's just me. Uh, also, Hollywood and China Doll show yesterday. Oh, man, is she pissed off at me? Pissed off. You know, we had a really good argument. You know, it was a good argument. I don't even call it a debate. It, 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 it was just that she was pissed at me. We were talking about feminism. Here I thought, okay, she knew what it is and all that stuff. Well, turns out she did it. She did it, which is good for me. She don't know what it means. <laughs> but at the same time, I had to give her a hooked on phonics scores. You know, hooked on phonics, teach you something. Well, by the end of the, the segment, she knew she was not a feminist. She's like, damn, them people crazy, man. Yeah, they are crazy, man. You know, anytime I hear feminists, I always get this image of a big butch lady. I'm talking butch, baby. You know, with the hair under the armpits, looking like a dude has that voice. That's, that's what I get. I don't know what it is. You know, I don't know what it is. But that was a pretty good segment. So that was our first argument on the air. And boy, I wish I could show the bloopers. I really do. The blooper reels. Oh, man, I got to start doing that. Uh, and uh, as soon as I hit the off the air, she's screaming at me. Ah, nah, 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 you make me look stupid. Hey, man, hooked on phonics. I'm giving you a course, man. Hey, not everybody knows every damn thing. I sure the hell don't. But uh, my main monologue today, I'm kind of upset. Kind of upset. There was a story out of the Detroit Press about a hostage situation. The newspaper passed it off, and I actually did this one on the last segment, as it was a member of the Scorpions that were involved in the killing of three people, a triple homicide, and that he was the hostage taker. Well, of course, the media was all wrong about that one. It was actually... A scorpion that was being held hostage. It wasn't the, uh, uh, my God, they don't even get their facts. And when I tried to get a hold of this guy, dude actually told me to go freaking F myself. Rude! You know what? You need some Vicks Vapor Rub for that schlong, man. Yeah, that dude's still talk, you know, trying to, he, dude, he crazy, man. I think I got a stalker. Uh, but anyway... Well, that's what uh, law enforcement gave me, and that's what I'm going with. I was like, what? See? That proves my point exactly. 
exactly of how they operate. They work hand in hand. See, if the media doesn't print what the cops want printed, then they don't get the inside scoops anymore. So they don't care how wrong they are on the deal. So then you got me. I will put the truth out there and say, hey, uh-uh, this wasn't the way it went down. I am not able to confirm this. All I, it's on a good source that it was a member of the highwaymen that was a part of all this stuff. Again, before you take that as gospel, that's what I heard from a very reputable source of how this all went down. The guy who drove up in the pickup truck was a member of the Scorpion Jess and the father. So hopefully that clears up a lot of things for us. It's just, you know what? Fake news is going to destroy this country. There used to be a lot of reporters, and you know, there might be some at the local level, because the local level is not as bad as the national. <laughs> what am I saying? In this case, they're a bunch of schlucks. But they really do believe in good journalism. And it's because of this new attitude. It has to be the younger reporters doing this. I don't know what the hell they were taught. But the truth don't mean much to them anymore. Facts don't mean much to them anymore. And they wonder why people don't believe them. Fake news, that's what everybody says. And like I talked about before, they are now go like biker news. A lot of people come to me, I'll look at I'll read the the article and we'll decide together. When I can get the inside information, I will. But one thing I tried to steer, you know, as far as the show is concerned, is t more to an editorial opinion segment. Again, I'll write my op-eds and stuff like I have been. But I don't want to go out there and play freaking, you know, Clark Kent, you know. I enjoy doing what I'm doing here, opinion segment. But I'm just not a beat reporter, man. Uh, but we can work together to see through the fake news and what's going on in the scene without me having to do all that stuff. Now, covering motorcycle rallies... Or talking about bikes? Now that's my thing. Hell yeah, if you want me to put a reporter hat on at that point, man, I'll put a reporter hat on that point. If it's covering a rally or covering a new bike model coming out. Uh, I'm really thinking about, in the wintertime, of doing a lot of bike reviews. You know, going to some dealerships, checking them out. That's because that's where my interest lies. I love the biker news, and I'm going to continue doing it every morning, Monday through Friday, so don't get whacked and don't think it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. But I like to put a little uh, different spin, you know, especially on the YouTube channel. You know, I got my radio base going. Uh, they love this stuff. They love the new other show. So, yeah, we're going to do that, I think. But as far as videos are concerned... We're going to do a little more of the bike reviews and stuff. I really like that stuff again. Again. I really wish that this hadn't hit like it did this COVID-19. Because I had a whole year planned out. A whole freaking year planned out. Of covering different rallies, traveling a little bit. The whole nine yards. And now to end up. You know, the, you know, 2020 sucks. But anyway, now, you know, I had this knee problem. See, what I was doing, I was deadlifting because I was powerlifting. And I think I hit, you know, I got it up, though. But uh, 
I hit some heavy weight and screwed up my knee pretty damn bad. Pretty damn bad. I'm talking bad. I'm like limping, man. You just call me gimp. And we're probably going to have to have that taken care of. Hey, maybe I'll do a show from the hospital. That'd be fun. <laughs> and then there's going to be all kinds of rehab time and all that stuff I'm suspecting. But I'll give you more updates on that. Uh, one other thing uh, before we go into the biker news. This kind of be a short monologue, if you will. Uh, a lot of people are interested. And you know what? I am going to be working hard on it. I think it'll take a whole year to plan this. But have a big ride for everybody together, and I really want to do the circle around Lake Michigan. I think that'd be freaking badass. You know, stay at campgrounds, no motels, no motels. We're going to do this freaking the old school way. So if we got some kids coming, yeah, they're going to learn right. You know, tarps, little two-man tents, you know what I mean? Having a nice beer at the end of the day with the ride, having a party, campfire, the whole nine yards. So that is what I'm working on now. Actually, China Dow is going to be helping out, and I'm going to be reaching out to some other people around this area to see what ideals they have for a ride. It's not going to cost you anything. We're actually thinking about trying to do something for Special Olympics, uh, something that's close to me. Uh, I want to raise something for that organization. You to check that out on the last show I did with uh, China Dow on the other YouTube channel. Uh, and you'll know what I mean and why I want to do it then. I'm not going to go into it on this show, but I'm really hoping to get that right going. Anyway, let's get on. See some biker news, baby. And you see how wrong these suckers really were. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Here we go, Detroit Free Press. And you know what? I took a little time during the break to actually go through this and compared it to what I read yesterday, and I decided I'm going to just, you know, the rest of the show, I'm going to concentrate on this, because it's that kind of reporting that really put clubs in the spotlight for no reason. There was no reason for that kind of article where they just take law enforcement's freaking position. And then they wonder why clubs will not talk to them. They wonder why they're not even trusted. What kind of crap was that? Now, there's two different authors on this. The one that wrote the other one, why didn't you write this one? Maybe because everybody was contacting you saying, hey, you know what, your story's fake. That you need to do a little freaking background check on this stuff. You said a member of the Scorpions was involved holding the hostage in the triple uh, homicide. That is not true. Not true. So I don't understand why there ain't anything because I've been looking on the Detroit Free Press. If there was any retraction now, it might be at the bottom. I don't know. We'll go down that far. But I believe this is the perfect type of article that people are sick of. This story, not this article, but this story and how it's covered by the mainstream media is out of line. You know... Let's talk about, you know, kind of get off this subject, but on uh, media. CNN don't even hide its bias anymore. Other news, so-called news organizations, don't even hide their biases anymore. But when them biases towards, say, law enforcement, it, it's funny. They it, it, talk out of both sides of their mouths to the media about law enforcement. 
they do what they need to do on a local level to get law enforcement to give them the details, but at the same time, they'll turn around and print all kinds of stupid stories as well. But this is one that you really need to pay attention to. Gunman dies by suicide after one hostage freed and the other escapes from home on Detroit's west side. Again, this was not, I repeat not, the same journalist on that if you want to call him journalist. A police standoff with a gunman on Detroit's west side ended Wednesday morning. After one hostage was released, the other escaped, and the 38-year-old suspect finally shot himself. Or fatally, my fault. <laughs> that was me saying finally. Uh, shot himself when he ran out of drugs and came off a narcotic high. The armed confrontation at a small white vinyl sided home tucked among tall trees in a quiet neighborhood. Are you sure this is Detroit? I'm just wondering because, you know, it's Detroit. It's a small, quiet neighborhood. Uh, lasted more than 30 hours and involved at least 150 officers. Police said the suspect, Thomas Curry, who had a swastika tattoo. They focus on the swastika crap during the whole thing. They are trying to portray bikers, club members... As white nationalists, <laughs> that too gets tiring. It really does. What would have happened if freaking every which way but loose and every which way but you can actually aired, you know, was made nowadays, man, with the Black Widows and the Swazi flags. You know, it gets old. It really does with this, uh, your racist crap. It is just so old called himself crazy and claimed responsibility for killing three people earlier this year was holed up inside his home with a pistol shotgun and possibly a cachet of weapons throughout the standoff curry made threats to kill the hostages and himself oh well, why do you, you know put everybody through that and you killed yourself Detroit Police uh, Assistant Chief David LaValle said the remaining hostage escaped earlier Wednesday when Curry was sleeping. That, LaValle said, was probably the turning point of the standoff. Well, you think? He was sleeping. They walked away. They got out of there. That was just a dumb, dumb idiot. At about 7.05 a.m., police moved towards the house using an armored vehicle to peek through the window. And it ended up taking down one of the outside walls. Officers heard a sudden pop and crashed through the door. Police said they found Curry's body in the house. Well, of course. Where the hell else is he going to be? He shot himself. Quote, We could see the individual lying in the living room. Adding that the pop was a gunshot. No, Mr. Obvious. Inside the house, officers used a flashbang device to determine... Whether the suspect was sleeping. Okay, you heard a pop, it's gunshot, but then he's like, Yeah, he's taking a, you know, he's going to be sleeping for a while there, <laughs> Mr. Wizards. Uh, waiting to attack her dead at this point, our homicide detectives are going to continue the process the scene. LaValle said it would take several more hours to go through evidence at the home, which was still teeming just before noon with dozens of local police uh, state and federal law. The gunman, LaValle added, told negotiators he knew he was going to prison for the rest of his life. He decided to kill himself instead. Well, that kind of happens when you kill three people. Uh, quote, our goal for any situation like this is to take the individual into custody with no force. Our preference would have been that he walked out the door and surrendered. Harold Jackson, 56 who has lived in the neighborhood for six years, gave police high marks Wednesday for how they handled the standoff, saying, well, cops were on their A-game. The Valley added that detectives are certain through their conversations with the suspect that Curry had been responsible for a June 11th triple homicide. This is the situation that they got wrong and put it on the Scorpions. <laughs> Scorpions are some damn good dudes. 
I had the opportunity in the past to be able to, uh, you know, meet some of them, and there's no way they'd be involved in some crap like that. An arson and the Wayne County's prosecutor's office sought an arrest warrant. In the June slaying at the house in the 1900 block of Helen Street in Detroit, the prosecutor's office said three men ages 34, 45, and 50 were shot to death. The resident was set on fire and the bodies burned. I do not know if this involves the two, uh, two clubs. Who knows? Uh, at least I say who knows, you know, because, you know, I don't know. You know, why couldn't you do that, Detroit Free Press, and just say, hey, we don't know what's going on? No, you write some stupid fake news crap, man. Curry, who had been communicating with police by phone and had been publicly uh, posting uh, to Facebook under an alias, was high on narcotics, probably crystal meth. Probably crystal meth. That, according to the police. See, there you throw out freaking... Uh, you're labeling bikers, man. Make sure you don't want to do the freaking drug freaking uh, test or do the autopsy where the chemical crap comes back before you put that out, probably. And drinking whiskey. Throughout the standoff, LaValle said Curry would go up and down, suggesting he got some cigarettes. He would surrender peacefully and alternately become an agitated and started yelling at negotiators. On Facebook, Curry went by the profile name Michael Hilgler. Hegler? Man, that, that freaking Facebook thing sounds familiar. I gotta go through my platforms now. And wrote, among other things, that, quote, the police are trying to kill me. It was followed by a long string of comments from others, including pleas to surrender. In another post, Curry suggested that there will be a book about his crazy-ass life and death in Detroit as a biker. The page mentions uh, two motorcycle clubs. The Scorpions and the Highwaymen. And there is a here it is again. A prominent photo of the Nazi party flag. He's a suspect in a, uh, what is it, a triple homicide. There's a hostage situation. And you guys keep on focusing on this Nazi crap. Hate to break it to you, but bikers ain't into that stuff. All that Nazi crap was used to intimidate people in the past, man, to keep you idiots away. There's also a picture of someone in jeans and a cowboy boot sleeping on the floor with a note that mentions the Detroit Scorpions MC, the police standoff, and that Benko bikers are the craziest. Close neighbors said Wednesday that Curry swastika here is again. Tattoo was on his neck and he made them feel uncomfortable. They said he worked for a lawn care company and wanted them to refer to him by his nickname, Crazy. Guess this dude was crazy, man. He's fruit loops, man. Uh, during the standoff, Detroit Police Chief James Craig said, The suspect told officers he had schizophrenia and had not been taking his medication. Well, that could freaking, you know, explain some stuff, shouldn't it? Among the demands Curry had made, the chief said, was to see his ex-girlfriend, and she refused. Well, <laughs> there's a smart one. Smart move, girl. The first hostage was released Tuesday evening through negotiations with police, but he had no intention of releasing the second hostage. Police said Curry released the first hostage, a woman, because he, quote, couldn't kill a female. Well, he's got some morals. Richard Nelson Sr., 66, of Detroit, said a friend called him and told him his 44-year-old son. Richard Nelson Jr. was one of the hostages. The senior Nelson, who wore a Scorpions Motorcycle Club ball cap, that was the picture that was in that other article, said his son also liked to ride and was a Scorpion. You see how they're framing this whole damn story now? The swastika tattoo, bikers, two different motorcycle groups. They're trying to blend them into all that freaking racist crap, man. It gets really old. The incident, authorities said, started at about 2.30 a.m. Tuesday when a man drove off in a GMC pickup truck. 
Hell yeah, GMC, baby. From a traffic stop by Redford Township Police, he later stopped the truck, ran from it, fired one shot at officers, broke into the home through a window, and took the two people who were inside as hostages. Craig said Tuesday the situation was in hand with experienced officers and negotiators working towards a peaceful end, but the suspect likely knew it was the last few moments of freedom he had left. Now, let me see if there's a retraction here. Nope! No retraction on that story! None whatsoever! Okay, man, I know I usually go uh, for at least 50 minutes to an hour on the Biker News Show. But I feel it's really important that I focus on this story. Because this is happening all over the damn country, all over the damn world, I can say that. Where media puts bikers into one mold. And next thing you know, all they are is getting harassed and... You get these damn profiling things going on. And the Scorpions are a damn good club. Damn good club. And it was all over the place that the Scorpions guy was the one who was actually the suspect in all this. When in actuality, and I'm not going to say he was or wasn't, but it's rumored to be he was a highwayman. Again, could be, could not be. It, it, it just, maybe the facts have come out. But according to some people I talked to, that's the way it was. So, here you got a local story that broke nationwide because a lot of people shared this one. And the Scorpions are the ones in the public eye when it was the member that was actually held hostage and in trouble and was facing a lunatic that could have shot him. So you can see maybe how people would be a little upset and ask for just a little retraction, just a little one. But you couldn't do that. Again, you to read it, or you can hear me talk about this incident on the last segment. I think it was uh, something about the pagans. I don't know. I, I you know what that four twenty fucks up my mind. Anyway, you can hear it on that. But personally, from us, we feel for the scorpions, man. Because no club should have to go through what they did, had to. I'm not only talking to media. I'm talking about that whole hostage situation. I could just imagine how the father felt. That was his son in there. But you take away from the story. Because you idiots are too focused. You got a heart on because a guy had a uh, swazi on his neck. And then the Nazi flag stuff. Why Why do you people do that? Do you idiots in the media or in the Beltway understand that normal people can care less about the way you think? This is amazing. This was a hostage situation. Three other people uh, were killed. And you're focusing on a Nazi flag trying to tie it to all bikers. That was your intent. See, a lot of the sheeple, they can't see through your BS. So, they just go along with what you say. Oh my God, that biker had a Nazi tattoo. All bikers must be like that. His neighbor was even uncomfortable with him. Did you see his Facebook? He had a Nazi flag on it. 
Oh, God knows if I gave you like a pan around of the studio, man. I got my rebel flags up. I got my Peckerwood stuff up. Because I'm a proud Peckerwood, baby. I can imagine what the media want to do then. You do not know the meaning of the Nazi regalia in the scene. It has nothing to do with being racist. It was an intimidation technique. A lot of people don't use it nowadays. But that's the way it used to be. Enough with this cancel culture bullshit. Again, it's old, man. Here was a very serious story. And you ruined it. One, by accusing something, uh, a club that wasn't doing it, but actually was the victim. And two, focusing on this Nazi crap. I don't know about you people, but now I know why, and I say it time and time again, over and over again, why people go to creators for their damn news. Because everybody's sick and tired of the lies. They can't even, they don't even know if the, they won't know a fact if it hit them right in the freaking face. If they're watching an incident going on right in front of them, they'll find some way to screw it up. Anyway, I know it's a pretty short episode today. Make sure you guys have a good uh, weekend. Stay safe. Ride your bikes, party, see some titties. Go over to our Instagram, check that out. Also, the Hollywood and China Dow show, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, Central Standard. We premiere it that way you guys can uh, talk in the chat rooms and all that good stuff. It's also on Spotify and all that good stuff. With that, you guys be careful. Go show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!